Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Political State from the Oklahoman. I'm Ben Felder here in the Oklahoman's video studios. In this election week, we actually have two episodes. Our first episode this week aired yesterday online. You can find that. Justin Winger and I discussing the big gubernatorial election, Kevin Stitt's election, and what it means for Oklahoma moving forward. But the other probably other biggest story of the night on Tuesday probably had to be the election of Kendra Horn, a Democrat congressional candidate who uh, flipped the 5th District, um, beating Representative Steve Russell. And Justin and I are pleased to have Representative-elect Horn joining us in studio this week. Uh, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Obviously, this was, you know, like I said, probably the biggest or one of the biggest election stories of the night in, in our area, but a very big national story. I think I saw by some pollsters um, you had outperformed, you know, had the greatest outperformance of expectations. Yeah. I'm curious, I mean, I know you're going into a race, you're confident, uh, you know, you're, you're putting into work. Uh, what were your thoughts when, when you saw the votes come in and you were on top Tuesday? Well, we were incredibly excited, of course. I think it, it was the culmination of all the work that we had done and the conversations we've been having for the last 18 months. And, and I think it, it felt like all of the things that we'd been seeing on the ground but hadn't necessarily been showing up in some of the polling or the national uh, prognostications that, that we had been feeling and seeing on the ground really came, came through that night. Yeah. yeah. So set the scene for us. Where are you? Who are you with as those results are coming in? And at what point do you think it's it's over? Well, I was, so our watch party was in at Rococo up, up in North Park mm -hmm. and, and there were a lot of people there and I was in, in the room with, you know, my campaign manager and just like two people watching the results come in. We had people, you know, checking the tapes at se several locations and uh, they just kept coming in and as it got closer and closer, we were watching what was what was out and just got more and more exciting. But I think right at the end, when we knew which precincts were out and what we expected to come in, that's that's when we knew. So uh, I don't know what I have no idea of the concept of time that night. <laughs> I, I, I completely lost any concept of time at a certain point, but uh, it was very exciting. And at some point, you, I imagine you get a call from the congressman, Congressman mm -hmm. Russell gives you a call. What is that conversation like, and uh, what do you have to say? Yeah, he called. Uh, I was at the watch party. Had to step outside because it was a little hard to hear in there. Of course. Uh, but he called to, to congratulate me, and he uh, just said that he hoped that I would, you know, take take the weight of the office seriously and prayerfully. And I said, um, absolutely. And that's that's why I got into this race is to serve, and and I absolutely am ready to show up for the people of this district. Yeah, so many storylines that night. I mean, this is a you know a transitioning district. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of momentum around Democrats, mm -hmm. so, so it's not just one thing. I get no. that, but but what do you feel like like about your message resonated with voters? I mean, what are the couple things that you really kind of peg your win on? Yeah, I think the overall if you want a, one word is is authenticity. But we we because we talked to people about things that were really important to them. We spent a lot of time listening and then a lot of time talking about issues like health care and education, which Justin knows because we, we talked throughout the course of this campaign. But the stories that we kept hearing uh, were, were really about people's concerns and fears about access to health care, their ability to pay mm -hmm. off their student loans. Uh, and then I think the other thing is we really changed the way that campaigns work in, in Oklahoma. We hadn't had campaigns with a lot of engagement, a lot of young people, and we, we built that mm -hmm. intentionally because we wanted all of those voices at the table. You know, a year ago, we were talking about your candidacy, and I think at, at, you know, more than a year ago, mm -hmm. talking about how health care, health care, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, the attempted repeal of Obamacare is, is such a big issue. Mm -hmm. And then education became the yeah. big thing. And it's, all, it's always such a wave. And then I'm mm -hmm. sure you're, you're kind of, uh, you know, at the mercy of what the president is saying. People mm -hmm. were asking you about that. How much did, I mean, it's national office, so sure. obviously those are important. But how much were national issues a part of this versus local issues? Because in some ways, you, were, you and the congressman were being asked about local issues that maybe you don't have a lot of control about, but yeah. are on the top of mind of voters. Absolutely, and local issues really carried a lot of people's concerns, but there are many places where those two things come together. You know, take health care. If people are asking about Medicaid expansion, as a member of Congress, I can't, yeah. make, I can't make Oklahoma take the Medicaid expansion dollars, but we could talk about protecting pre-existing conditions and lifetime caps and other things that, that we can do that, you know, people were concerned about. Uh, one of our very first uh, sort of town hall meetings that we held, uh, there was a, a woman and her, her grown son in his 20s, I mm -hmm. think, that came and, and started to talk to me about health care. They were concerned because they had discovered he had a brain tumor. And the only reason he was able to get health care 
is because of the ACA and the protections on pre-existing conditions and lifetime caps. So it was stories like that that really kept me going and kept us going and excited to uh, get out there every day and talk to voters. Yeah, The message discipline really fascinated me. In an era where <clears throat> the news cycle changes 10 times a day and you somehow stayed focused on healthcare and education, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and somehow put out kind of Put the, took the other noise and set it aside a little bit. Was that difficult to do sometimes? You had to have been asked about the president a lot, and yet the, neither campaign really focused on the president at all. You know, that came up some, but I, I, it was, I was surprised at, at how much of a difference there, there was when you'd ask people, what are you concerned about? Healthcare and education weren't just two things that we decided to you know, tell people we wanted to talk about. It was over and over and over again what people came to us about. Mm. And there were other issues, but um, and definitely concerns, but I think one of the things that that I really wanted to that we really wanted to do when we set out was to have real conversations, get it out of that us versus them place and let's talk about what's good policy, what's good for Oklahomans in the fifth district and what's gonna help us here. It was such a good night for Democrats in Oklahoma County, mm -hmm. not so much outside of Oklahoma County, but in the county and people you know like Carrie Hicks. Mm -hmm. What we talk about the district going blue, and we talk about the county, especially in Oklahoma City, being blue or even bluer mm -hmm. than it was. Young people, uh, minorities. Um, what is it that you're seeing? I mean, you've mapped it all out. You've mm -hmm. not only gone door to door, but you've looked at every uh, chart and graph. Yeah. I'm sure that there's <laughs> possible to look yeah, at. Yeah, that's true. So, <laughs> what what are you seeing in Oklahoma County that is trending that county, this county, blue? There's a big shift in demographics. You can see it in the, the number of people that have moved into Oklahoma County and Oklahoma City. In the last 10 years, there's been a big growth of uh, young professionals and families. We've got you know, a lot of economic growth and development in the city, going back to the beginning of the, the first MAPS program, which uh, that intentional you know, development has brought people in that are starting small businesses and being innovative in restaurants and so many things like that. And those are the people that, when we get out and talk to them, have not, they hadn't been engaged before, uh, but they're starting to realize how important it is, and we set out to do that. And I think you saw the overlap with, um, with Julia Kurt, with Carrie Hicks, with Carrie mm -hmm. Bloomer, some of the other women that won these seats, that I think we change things by having real conversations and getting out of the DRI mode and just talking about, what are policies and what can we do to help our communities be stronger? Yeah, well, let's talk about you know the work that's ahead of you as you prepare to, to enter Congress. And you'll enter with a Democratic majority. And let's mm -hmm. just start, we've got several questions, but yeah. let's just start from sure. the top. So a lot of focus right now, Democrats are in control of Congress. What does that mean for uh, President Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. Are we gonna see an increase in, in investigations from, from the House? I'm just kind of curious, you know, what do you think the strategy should be for Democrats right now? This adversarial relationship with the president, uh, now they have control, now they have some power, subpoena power, mm -hmm. some other abilities to maybe take some investigations further. It's just kind of what are your thoughts uh, on, on the relationship between the House and the president right now? Well, I, I think it's, I think, I think we see a lot of, a lot of, um, how do I want to say this? I think we see a lot of, of conversations around that and posturing on either side. But I, I believe that's one of the reasons we were able to overcome that is that's just not the way I operate. I, I believe that we have to be able to reach across the aisle, find those common points and start to do the work because if we're not able to do that, it's going to be really problematic because you have a Democratic House, a Republican Senate, and a Republican President, and that can encourage if we if we choose to, and that's my intention going up there. That can encourage actually actually compromise and I think better outcomes uh, in the long run. And there are some really important issues that shouldn't be partisan. So how do we find those places to work together? And that's my number one goal because I'm been elected to represent not just the people that voted for me, but the whole 5th Congressional District, and that is absolutely what I intend to do. It's not what your party affiliation is or who you voted for. Uh, our representatives should listen to everybody and take that into account. Yeah, and in, in my uh, opinion, you ran a, a moderate Democrat campaign. Do you expect to be a moderate Democrat in Washington? Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, yeah. I, I am who I am, and yeah. I, I think that's something that resonated with people. 
I have always worked with people on both sides of the aisle when I was working, you know, up here with the organizations at the state capitol for issues impacting women and families. We had Republican and Democratic co-sponsors, uh, and I think what's best for the community is not always best for a party, but Oklahoma and the 5th District comes first before anything else. So my decisions aren't going to be based on anything anybody in leadership or anybody else wants to tell me to do. It's going to be what's best for Oklahoma. Yeah. Have you given any thought to committee assignments? Uh, not totally in your control yeah. by any means as coming in as a freshman, but any uh, any committees you would like to be on? Any we're, issues? We're looking at that now, you know, how that's going to shape up. And mm -hmm. I think that um, there, are, there are a number that sort of appeal, but we haven't, we haven't kind of we haven't gotten to the the heart of that. Uh, I do have uh, I do have experience. I worked in the space industry for a number of years, so um, you know the idea of science, space, and technology science, is yeah. is is pretty exciting. And I think there are a number of others, because in in the fifth district, to your question earlier about what's happening, we've got an amazing system of, of health and research. You know, over in the research park, yeah. uh, we've also got the new innovation uh, hub and. So there are a lot of things that are happening that can help to, to strengthen the economy here, and, and those are places that I want to be able to plug in, in addition to, of course, healthcare and education, which will continue to be my priority. I was going to ask about that. Healthcare yeah. and education, obviously, yeah. the focus of the campaign. Was that more about preserving the, what is already there, things like the ACA, or do you have some ideas going forward? And do you see those being issues in, you take forward in Congress, aside from just the campaign? Yeah. Well, number one is, is preserving. And then the second thing is we still have so many people that don't have access to care. And right now the cost of care for so many people is they can't, they can't go to the doctor when they need to see the doctor. Uh, or if they have a major health emergency, they could end up in bankruptcy. 25% of bankruptcies now are because of medical debt. So I think that there are places we can explore to, you know, things like in, encouraging community health centers. We've got to increase access to mental health care. Those are, those are really important things. So um, when, we, when I get up there, we're going to start looking at ways that we can chip away at that. And on the education side of things, there are some solutions that I want to tackle right away that will hold you know, the student loan industry accountable. Mm -hmm. Our, the interest rates are just astronomical right now, so much that you know, I have had a conversation with a friend, uh, late 20s, early 30s put herself through undergrad, graduate school, here, state university, with scholarships, work the whole time. Came out with $75,000 in student loans, mm. which is a lot, even with all that. But by the time she pays it off, she will have paid over $200,000. So this is, these are things that keep people from buying homes, starting mm -hmm. families, and yeah. I think they're things that we can begin to address. You know, one of the first things on the plate for Democrats in the yeah. House now that they retake control is, is the selection of the Speaker. Yeah. Obviously, Representative Nancy Pelosi is, has intentions to, to yeah. regain that mantle, um, but it's maybe not a done deal quite yet. There's some speculation. Um, I'm curious, what is your thought on the Speaker position? Who, who Will you support Representative Pelosi, or do you feel like the Democratic House needs to go in a different direction? I think one of the messages of this election cycle and one of the things that, that I that I've always believed is that we need right now we need new, new new direction and new leadership and the only guarantee I have made and I will make is to vote in the best interest of, of Oklahomans and I think we have to get past those partisan labels and have somebody in charge that's going to work for the best interest of the country and and I will commit to voting in the best interest of Oklahomans and and I don't know who all's throwing their hat in the ring mm -hmm. so I can't say who I'm going to vote for but I do think that the Democratic Party and Democratic leadership, they, we need new leaders to step in and fresh blood. That that was a clear message with this incoming class. So to, to read between the lines here a little bit, two things I, I take away from that. One is uh, you haven't committed to, to supporting no. a Representative Pelosi no. for no. the Speaker position. But, you, but you're interested in maybe a new a new face. Lately. Yes, absolutely. And and I, like I said, I'm just learning yeah. who all's running. So I can't tell you who I'm supporting, but I do think it's very important with the changes in cities like Oklahoma and places places like this, we've got to have leadership that understands Oklahomans. And and I think we've been such a red state for so long that we have we haven't been in the conversation and people who are moderate or, you know, agree on some issues, disagree on others, haven't really had as much of a voice at the table. Yeah. 
you mentioned earlier uh, this idea of a new campaign or a new way of campaigning. You've, you've yeah. said it a few times the last few days. What uh, you touched on that a little bit. What can someone take from your campaign if they're running the state senate, yeah. state house in the district? And every district's a little mm -hmm. different, of course. Yeah, I mean, of course. You couldn't match it completely. But you've been a campaign manager before. You mm -hmm. obviously just ran a really well-run campaign. What can they take, if they're running in Oklahoma County, mm -hmm. from your victory? Uh, I think they can take a couple things. Uh, talk to the voters face-to-face. -face. Make sure that you're, you're getting out there. Have a, have a smart plan and, and, and work it. And, and, and put people around you that are going to help support you, that, that believe in it. Uh, I think it's also really important when I say about changing the way that we do run campaigns and do politics is we brought people in on purpose. We have a big group, those people that were behind me so were all of our fellows. So, you know, they're young people, so some of them came in for fall semester and some of them were in for the summer, but we really intentionally said, come in, learn what this is about. I think one of our biggest challenges is that people stopped engaging mm -hmm. and they didn't think that they mattered and they didn't think they could make a difference. And so what we've shown them is that they can and they, mm. they, they do. And they all came in for different reasons, uh, but we involved them and it wasn't just, hey, here, go knock these doors. We pulled them in and helped them understand what the process is and why this is important and the issues that are going to impact their lives. So what's, I mean, you are, you know, kind of de facto the, the high, well, you are the highest ranking Democrat in the state right now, not mm -hmm. that you're necessarily in control of the party, but yeah. a lot of the people in the party are going to look up to you. Uh, if you are an Oklahoma City Democrat, you probably feel pretty good about Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. You've uh, flipped a few seats in the Senate, uh, mm -hmm. flipped a fifth district. If you're a statewide Democrat, you feel pretty bad. Mm -hmm. uh, Democrats continue to, to lose every statewide seat, including a, a governor's race that they're thinking that Democrats might be able to take control of. So what's like, where do you feel like the focus of the party here in Oklahoma needs to be? Because it looks different to run as a Democrat in Oklahoma City as it does statewide. Can Democrats appeal to a statewide electorate um, or is this just going to be an island of blue and just trying to be, you know, as strong as they can in Oklahoma City and maybe Tulsa? Uh, I think that goes back to one of the reasons we run. We ran in our district. I, I didn't try to run on no. somebody else's issues mm -hmm. somewhere else. We talked to the people in this community about the issues that were important to them and what, what, what we could do to, to make a difference. I think the same has to be true across the state. And what the for me, we have to start talking about ideas and the impacts and what these policies are doing versus red versus blue. What, why is education important? How do we fund it? Let's, let's have those conversations. We've seen you know, different outcomes in the state questions than we have in, in the elected offices. So how can we, how can we continue to talk about what's, what's our goal with health care? Okay, our goal with health care is to make sure that everybody gets the care they need at an affordable rate. I think that's important. We've got to meet people where they are. Yeah. And and I don't think it's I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that Democrats are never going to do that. But we haven't, uh, you know, we haven't built up you know a lot of momentum in a while. And and that's one of the things we were losing the young voters. We're losing yeah. a lot of the other people as we see the number of independents getting bigger too. Have you had a chance to talk with other members of Congress, especially other members of the U.S. House from Oklahoma? You have some experienced guys in there like mm -hmm. Lucas and Cole, have they reached out to you or have you reached out to them and what might you learn from them even though obviously you have yeah. a different party? Yeah, uh, yes I've gotten calls from most of the congressional delegation, all of the other House members uh, and I think there's a lot I can learn from him, them. I, there's, there's a lot of places we can work together uh, and, and we can find common ground to, to work on issues that are important to Oklahoma. Uh, things like criminal justice reform I think could be very important. and. From my experience when I was, you know, working on the Hill when I was younger, uh, there's a lot more camaraderie within a delegation, and I think they've got a lot of experience about how to navigate things on the Hill, so I look forward to, to working with them because this is our delegation. We're representing the state of Oklahoma, and it shouldn't be an us versus them because that doesn't help the state. I think of something like Native American issues that mm -hmm. Oklahoma Absolutely. knows just better than, frankly, most of the rest of the country. Yeah. And it's not an easy partisan line there. I yeah. mean, Obama worked really well with uh, Tom Cole and vice mm -hmm. versa. Cole worked really well and he'll tell you that. And yeah. then obviously very different people politically in a lot of ways, but something like that. I, Native American issues always come back to mm -hmm. me. It's kind of the area where the delegation really comes together. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's a critical issue. I think there are several other places where we can and we should. Yeah. Um, but I also believe that that takes a willingness and a will to do that. And, and it's, I think it's good for our, our state to have some different voices. And, and that's why representation, you know, I've been asked about, you know, women and the impact of more women. It's, it's not about women versus men or anything or anything like that. It's about having our representatives look more like our communities because we all have different perspectives that we bring to the table. That's why bipartisan legislation is often a really good thing because yeah. you you have a different experience than I do. And you know, while we may disagree, those different perspectives I think can end up with better better solutions for healthcare, better solutions for education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as we as we wrap up uh, this episode, uh, tell us, uh, give us a little bit of a peek. What's this transition look yeah. like for those who are just kind of curious? You know, now you're representative elect. Uh, you know, is there an orientation packet you can demand? I mean, <laughs> what's that transition look like? And what what yeah. is your plan for for your you know in setting an office and a team and getting yes. ready to go to, to Washington? So we are in the transitioning from campaign mode to uh, to setting up the office. I yes, there's an orientation. <laughs> there's lots of orientation because yeah. there's lots of things that we have to do. So I'll be headed to D.C. Uh, next week for the first week of orientation. There's a couple weeks that, you know, give you the, the lay of the land mm -hmm. and how to set it up. We'll, we'll begin to hire staff and, and get that ready. They do a, um, basically a lottery system for, for offices, so we'll see where I end up there. But then here on the ground, we'll start to, we'll, we're working on where we're placing the office and all of that sort of thing because it is, I think it is critical that we are showing up for the communities and I want to make sure that our office is accessible and that if people have needs, whether it's with, for help with their Social Security or their Medicare or whatever it is, that they know that we are there for them uh, and, and, that's, and that's really important. So we'll uh, go to this orientation we'll start to get the office space and, and, and hire staff both in D.C. and here. Yeah. All right. That was all I had. Thanks yeah. again for joining Excellent. us. Yeah. And, uh, there are some criticisms to be made of the way Russell ran his campaign and what he may could have done otherwise. None of those should take away from what was a really good campaign on your end. Thank you. And uh, a, a true upset victory in a lot of ways. And thanks again for joining us. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much. So big story, and obviously we'll keep following it yeah. as your, your journey to, to Washington. So Representative-elect Kendra Horn, thanks so much for your time. That's going to do it for this week's episode. We're the second uh, episode of the week from Political State. We'll be back again next Friday with Justin. I'm Ben. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.